So you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, huh? But there's one quality that will guarantee that you will never become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And because I want you to win the money game, I'll be breaking down that one quality of someone that will never become a first generation cash flow millionaire in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. We're fighting in them trenches. Now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Seven Figure Squad home office here, Money Smart Moon headquarters in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, here, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And what a week I had last week. We're in, uh, what, three, uh, what, f what uh, four different cities, five different days, six different airports. But at least for the first three, four days here, I'm here, home based in Chicago. But very, very excited for the end of this week. We'll be at the United States Naval Academy shooting some content with my good friends Chris and Vecina Hart and as well as their uh, business partner there, Bill Corman. But in this episode, we're going to unpack and unveil the one trap, the one quality that will ensure that you, sadly, will never become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So why is this so important? Because I want you to identify early on whether or not you possess this quality so you can work on this quality, so therefore you have a shot at becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. But equally as important, I also want you to identify those around you because if they have this quality, they just might be that anchor that keeps you from getting to where you want to go because hey, there's a saying that good character is corrupted by bad company. So let's get right into it. What is this one quality? It's right here, being unpredictable, and being unstable. That's right, being unpredictable and being unstable. You know, my mentor, Patrick Bedavid, CEO, founder of PHP Agency and host of Value Attainment, he said, Matt, I grew up in Iran. One day we got bombed like 167 times in one day. When's the last time you woke up in the United States of America and ever wondered whether or not you were getting bombed? Never, never, not at the rate that uh, you're talking about that you were growing up with in Iran. So in other words, that's predictability, safety, consistency that you show here in the United States of America of why people want to come live their American dream in the United States of America, right? This is interesting that you said that. Because just like a country, there is no place in the world for unpredictability and instability, especially if you want to financially prosper and get ahead financially. So here are three qualities of an unpredictable person that you can identify either in yourself or in others, so therefore you can improve or remove in your journey becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Number one, emotional unpredictability, emotional instability. What am I talking about? Well, this person tends to be a little passive aggressive. I'm gonna take a shot at my own, my own kind. A lot of Filipinos are passive aggressive. They say, yes, 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 yes. But behind closed doors or when you walk away from them, man, they are mad at you. Man, they don't like you. And by the way, I'm Filipino, so I can say that. Why? Because pretty much my entire family acts in this manner. To your face, it's like, yes, I agree, uh-huh. But you know, when they get back home, we're getting in the car, yo, I don't think I agree. See, that's being unpredictable. Shoot, that's not being even honest. And we're looking at also emotional unstable or emotional unpredictable people. It's also they have a low EQ. I didn't say IQ, that they're not smart or intelligent. It's low EQ, which stands for emotional intelligence. In other words, they're not self-aware, not socially aware, they're not aware of a lot of other things, and therefore, because they show low EQ, they are unstable and unpredictable. And last but not least, lots of folks that are unstable, that are unpredictable, guess what they do? They really hide their true feelings. They say, you know what, I agree, or you say, you know what, I put my money there, but later change your mind and try to get their money back behind your back, ask for a refund, that's being emotionally unstable, unpredictable. They put their signature on a deal and their signature means crap because behind closed doors or when people walk away or somebody changes their mind, they try to cancel that contract or try to undo what they already agreed to do. Therefore, their word means nothing. And that's why if you're around somebody that's emotionally unstable, they are never going to be a first generation cash flow millionaire. I remember this one time, this, uh, this one couple, we're coaching them, we're mentoring, coaching, mentoring, and hey, their first 30 days, their first days on a part-time basis, they made $8,000, $8,000. 
And uh, they weren't the first, they weren't the last. But I remember this particular couple because we had so much uh, excitement for them. We were so encouraged by them. But sadly, they not only possess this quality, but people around them possess the quali this quality. And as soon as they started expressing the concerns, they started, they started competing with people in their office and with inside the office, you know, we have a competitive environment. We're in a sales environment here, right? And so as we had a couple contests and there's a couple weeks in a row, they're, they're getting, you know, they're getting beat by other people. They're getting beat by other people. Why? Because you're number one in the office. You make $8,000 your first month. People are like, wow, wow, I'm coming after you. You got, I got goals. You got goals. Let's compete. Let's see the best of, of what we can do when we compete and see the best version of ourselves. But sadly, they didn't know I handle a couple weeks losing to other people. And one, two, three, four weeks later, sadly, they quit. They quit. You thought that after a great start to a new career, a great start to a new endeavor, a great start to a new business, making $8,000 with absolutely no debt, absolutely borrowing from nobody, absolutely zero cost marketing, you quit. Why? Because you don't know how to handle a loss. You don't know how to handle somebody beating you in a competition. You don't know how to handle somebody saying, you know what, I got you, I got you. And because you're emotionally unstable, that brings out the worst in you. You got bitter about it. Instead, you should have gotten better about it, and sadly, they quit. And you know what? You know what we found them doing later on? Driving Uber. So they were better off sticking with it and dealing with the punches and improving and getting better versus saying, you know what? I can't take the heat. They got out the kitchen, and sadly today, they're driving Uber. Okay, so number two, production unpredictability. Production instability. This is what it looks like. They prepare, they prepare, they prepare, they prepare, but never do. Or the one time that they do, they don't get the result that they want, they don't get the promotion that they want, they don't get the client that they want, they don't get the sale that they want, they don't get the opportunity that they want. Oh, it's over with. Can't handle this, man. I, I, I need to prepare better. I need to increase my skills. There's something I don't know. No, no. You do know what to do. You're just not out there doing it because it's in your head. It's in your spirit. It's in your lack of feeling good about yourself and having the courage and boldness to say, you know what, let me get stable about this and let me go out there and just get it done. Because at the same time too as well, a person that has production unpredictability, production instability, they want to succeed, they want to succeed, they want to succeed, but they're lacking the consistent effort in actually doing it and accomplishing it. You know, for many people in business, many people in sales, many people are looking for the one job, looking at one gig, the one tryout, the one casting call. You think one gig, one opportunity is going to do it for you? Or is it a multitude of things happening over multiple times that starts to compound his efforts, compound his opportunities, and all the while you getting better, but a lot of people don't get to that point. Because why? Because they're emotionally unstable, emotionally unpredictable, which then leads to them being uncoachable. They don't want to do their homework. And the worst part about this instability, this unpredictability, they blame other people. This leads to entitlement. This leads to blame. This leads to victimhood type of mentality. Why? Because somebody is emotionally unstable. Now it leads to production instability. And because they're not paying the bills, this is the worst. By the way, these folks here are some of the greatest recruiters of why sales, entrepreneurship, capitalism, going in business for yourself does not work. They're the greatest recruiters to that endeavor. All right, so let's check out this graph. And uh, Patrick Ben David shared us this graph called "What's Your Gap?" Let's take let's let's put this on here on the screen. What's your gap? Here I did a gross <laughs> design redrawing of it. But listen, 80% of people, okay, they have a high point and a low point. High point and low point. In other words, the low point because the instability starts them off very low. So already they're working from behind the power curve. Why? Because they started as, as as a level one type person. But once things start going their way, things start going, oh, okay, it's going, it's going great. All right, I'm, I'm competing with almost about everybody. I might not be at the top of the leaders bulletin. I'm at the top of my class, but I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Boom. Next thing you know, they hit a goal. Boom. Unstable. Boom. They hit a failure. Boom. Unstable. They start dipping again. Their high point might be at an 8.5 at, at the high point. Their high point might be at the 8.5 level, but man, their drops and their upswings and their drops leads to really no financial stability, production stability, 
And guess what? They never become a first-generation cash millionaire. That's why they're part of the 80%. What about the 20%? Well, the 20%, their low point is a little bit higher. They're starting at a four, five, six, somewhere in there. And then, boom, they take off. And guess what? Right around here, they're competing with the best of the best. Woo! Right? They're taking their shots. They're giving their shots. But next thing you know, a vacation goes on, a long holiday, uh, uh, sadly, some uh, health issues, uh, family issues, potentially even financial or even legal issues happen. Boom, they're off their, they're off their game, off their game, off their game. This doesn't work, hard to work at it, boom, they're back down here. They get a rebreath. They get a second breath, right? They breathe again. Oh, I compete, I compete, I compete. Now they're competing with the best of the best of the best. Makes sure something happens again, a little bit more instability kicks in. They don't really know how to recover from that. And guess what? Their low point is a four, high point is a nine and a half. However, that being said, when they are at the high point, when they are stable, they compete with the best of everybody. What about the top 10%? People making 250. $300,000, $400,000 $300,000, $400,000 a year. They're at a nine and a half, two as well, the high point six, right? Boom, they take off, they take off. Less ups and downs, but yet they're still there. Here's the top 1%. You wanna be a first generation cash flow millionaire? You want a nice progression? You want a, not, a nice thought pattern? Boom, start competing at the high point. Doesn't matter if there's a weekend, doesn't matter if there's a holiday, doesn't matter if there's Black Friday or Thanksgiving or 4th of July. It doesn't matter, uh, St. Patrick's Day, whatever the case may be, you're always performing. People say, well, Matt, you know, there's a holiday, there's a, you know, there's a, a, a wedding and an anniversary. There's always a wedding. There's always an anniversary. There's always a birthday party. There's always a quinceanera. There's always, sadly, a funeral. There's always a 4th of July. There's always a Thanksgiving. There's always a holiday. But the best of the best, the reason why they're up here is because they're consistent. If bills are relentless, Week in, week out, month in, month out. Guess where you should apply your efforts to outpace the hustle of your bills. And it should be here at a high point. So therefore your bills are down here, but your income is up here. So if the bills or emergencies start coming up, boom, you just cut a check. Another emergency situation comes up, boom, you just cut a check. You just, keep, you just continue on. You just keep going. The same thing here too as well. At this high point in nine and a half, everybody's competing. But as soon as that Contest is over, as soon as that holiday is over, or as soon as that initiative is over, as soon as that campaign is over, most everybody drops off, except the person who operates in the top 1%. The question for you, every day your decision is, do I want to act like somebody in 80%? Do I want to act like somebody in 20%, 10%? Or if I want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, do I apply stability, predictability in my life, or am I just unstable, unpredictable? Do I have an office, daily office schedule? Am I predictably at the office by a certain time? Am I predictably in a contest or am I predictably at the top of the leader's bulletin? Am I predictably in the mix, in a bidding uh, uh, for a job? Am I predictably at a gig? Am I predictably showing show up on social media? Am I predictably, right? S- same as news. For example, let's take a look at news. What time is the news on at night? News is at five, news is at five, news is at five, news is at five. That's predictable. And that's why people have networks. People watch the news. People watch that and they can drive advertising. They can drive revenue. Why? Sponsors like it. Advertisers like it. Why? Because it's predictable. It's stable. They know that a certain amount of viewers watch it from 5 to 5.30. They can slice in ads. Same thing too with the Super Bowl. Same thing with any sporting events. No matter what, the show must go on. And because it does go on, there's predictability, there's stability, there's safety, there's profit. Last but not least, which leads to that number three, which is financial stability, financial security, or financial instability, or financial insecurity, unpredictability. And here's what it looks like. Uncontrolled spending. As much money as you, you, know, you get, you spend. You get, you spend. You get, you spend. Not keeping track of things. Not staying within a specific budget. You know, I remember one time we were at a, a, an investor's meeting, and uh, somebody was asking us uh, for money. They were asking us to invest in their deal. Says, no problem, we're investing in your deal. Sounds like a great idea, sounds like a great uh, um, uh, invention. Sounds like something that help a lot of businesses manage waste. And so we asked that uh, uh, kid one question. Uh, How much of your own money is in this project? How much of your own money did you put into research and development? How much of your own money is into equipment? He says zero. We said, what do you need money for? You need us for money, right? So what's the money for? Well, I need to pay my bills. I got my apartment. I got my car. Whoa, 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 hold on real quick. We're not funding your lifestyle, we're funding your business. So in other words, you're using us to 
funnel your lifestyle using us to pay for your bills? I'm sorry, kid. We can't do this. Uh, that's not a bad deal for us. And by the way, going forward, you should never ask an investor to invest your business, especially if it's, un when we unpack it, we're really paying your bills. So therefore you can do research and development. You don't really have a solid business. You don't have what Damon John calls a proof of concept. You should, the last thing you should be asking for is for us to pay your bills. Your business is essentially down the road should be paying your bills, not your investors. So we pulled out of the deal. Why? Financial instability and financial insecurity. We didn't feel secure with the deal. We didn't feel the, the person was stable, out of, out of there. Uh, debt, financial instability, financial unpredictability means a lot of debt. Keeping up with the Joneses. You know, oftentimes when you have expenses in business, listen, uh, you know, uh, you, here's the type of credit problem you want to have. Here's the type of, you want to know, if you want to have a credit problem, here's the type of credit problem you have. You don't have a lot of debt on your credit profile, <laughs> right? You don't have a lot of debt on your credit profile. Matter of fact, you haven't borrowed a lot. You haven't gotten a lot of loans. You haven't gotten a lot of credit cards. If there's going to be a credit problem that you do have, it's because you don't have a lot of credit. Here's a bad problem a lot of people have. They have too much credit and they don't have enough income. And that creates a lot more instability, insecurity versus somebody with no established credit. That's the easier problem. Third one, they use money, sadly, not to invest, but sadly to manipulate. That's a financially unstable person. That's a financially unpredictable type of person. You know, and, and when they make the money, they spend the money. They make the money, they spend the money. They only give in a ways to manipulate. Again, a financial unstable and a financially unpredictable type of person. All right, so how do we fix some of these issues? Well, it's too much, too much to pack in one video. So here's some videos we want to suggest we've done in, in, previous, uh, in previous months. For emotional instability, emotional insecurity, I suggest you watch this video, how to handle pressure and burnout. Oftentimes we get the pressure and burnout, lack of instability, insecurity, because our family puts pressure on us. We doubt ourselves, we have parent guilt. Watch this video, how to handle pressure and avoid burnout. Second one here, if you want to handle production instability, production insecurity, watch this video, how to treat your business like a millionaire. Uh, sometimes people never get out of the business because they treat their business wrong. It's like a, a relationship. If you treat the relationship wrong, you won't have a relationship for very much longer. So that's why this video here will be very appropriate for you to check out. And the number three, for financial instability, financial insecurity, watch this video here, how to manage your money like a millionaire. So there's a couple of topics that we break down to unpack it, how to make sure that you have finances in order, because the last thing you wanna do in your journey towards financial independence, financial freedom, becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire, is sadly as you're working up, working hard, and things are crumbling right behind you, working really hard, things are crumbling behind you, you gotta take the money here to repay the mistakes here, take the money here to repay some mistakes here. It's called a hamster wheel. You never get anywhere. So you wanna make sure if you are handling your finances appropriately, it's with stability, predictability, safety, so therefore you can keep the main thing, the main thing. All right, so before I wrap up, let me share with you a final story that I had with the, at this time, a new budding relationship, again, with my CEO, founder of PHP Agency, host of Valley Entertainment, Patrick, but David. I remember it was three months after we came on board here at PHP Agency, and for the most part, you know, I had a fairly successful small agency, and uh, I prided myself at that time of being a 14-year veteran producer in the insurance industry that I sold my way to multi-million dollar production. I sold myself to being the number one insurance agent out of 25,000 licensed agents at my previous uh, FMO, uh, financial marketing organization, insurance marketing organization. I was the number one guy. And I had a small team. I had a small team of guys that uh, I ended up either recruiting or they got attracted to what I was doing because they're like, man, how do I make the money you make? How do I get involved in the insurance industry, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I remember I first came on board and uh, Patrick, he took a look at our operation. He came, we came out here and it was, he was like, yeah, uh, hey Matt, you know, uh, how many guests did you guys have at uh, this, this workshop? I said, we have 37 guests. He's like, whoa, Mr. Money Smart Guy, Mr. You know, founder of the Money Smart Movement organization, you know, you found 37 people in all of Chicago to come out to our workshop. Is that it? Is that it? So he was, he was, pushing, my, he was pushing my standards and raising my standards. And then he, we went out for dinner and we went upstairs to our office. It was about 10, 11 o'clock at night and Patrick started grilling all my guys. He started grilling all my guys. He says, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you do a recruiting interview? How do you do a hiring interview? How do you, do, how do you hire somebody for your staff? How do you overcome these type of objections? How do you present? How do you make phone calls? Boom, 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 boom. And he led us through about seven or 10 different questions. He was just, you know, basically revealing my business. And at that time I was making about 160,000 a year, 180,000 a year. Not bad, right? 
as compared to a $20,000 a year sergeant in the Marines after eight years serving in, in the Marine Corps. And so in my standard, that was my standard. My standard was like, hey, hey, PBD, we're making 160, 180, $200,000 a year. We're good, right? We're good. How do we take that to the next level, right? He's like, oh my gosh, Matt, everybody here has got a different way to doing things. And in order for you to scale, have operations, standardization of policies and procedures, and to be able to track your business without having to start up and start fresh every time you open up a new office, start fresh and start, right? You don't have, just like in the military, you don't have standard operating procedures. You don't have systems. You don't have processes. You don't have any of these things. I'm like, oh my gosh, how embarrassing. I know. So PBD, what's the solution? He, he, look, he goes like this. He goes, oh my gosh, and how much money you guys made? I said, 180, $200,000, 160, $180, $200,000. Oh my gosh, really? You guys made that much money by screwing it all up. He looks up like this, he goes, uncharted territory. I said, like, what are you talking about? You guys are about to come to uncharted territory where I don't think many people have ever been to, every, nobody's ever seen. And I looked up at him like, okay, what's this all about? Anyway, make a long story short, we installed systems. We installed processes. We started to learn how to scale. We learned how to standardize. We learned how to implement these systems and procedures to make sure our guys, whether the East Coast, West Coast, uh, North, South, Florida, Tennessee, Atlanta, New Mexico, don't matter. People were people. We need standardization. We need policies, procedures, predictable, sustainable outcome would happen once we push the button, psh, outcome. Push the button, psh, outcome. Why? Because things were done on a predictable, systematic, sustainable basis. And all we had to do was just mix in these three things. And guess what happened to our business? First, you made $200,000. Uh, uh, five, six months after that, we went from $200,000 to $500,000. 37 months after starting these procedures and putting predictability and stability and security into our business, guess what happened? Seven figures after 37 months. So if you're looking for ways to get ahead financially, am I running a system? Am I running a process? Is everything I'm doing, again, from scratch every time I do it, it's the same thing I'm doing month in, month out, but I'm doing it from scratch every time I'm doing it. Again, that causes emotional instability, production insecurity, and financial unpredictability. What a big mess. But the opposite is true. Once you have those policies, those procedures, guess what starts happening in your life? You become sustainable, you become scalable, you become systematic, and you become predictable. So therefore, success is not hope. Success is not I wish. Success is like, I'll soon get there, I think. Success then becomes predictable. And if you want that in your life, consider implementing those things we just talked about in this video. Again, before I let you guys go, check out these couple videos here. Number one, watch this video here with my CEO mentor, Patrick and David mindset hacks that millionaires use. And the second video here is a harsh reality, which I did from the shores and beaches of Maui. We were there just about a month ago. A video that most aspiring first generation cash flow millionaires must watch. So therefore you can face that reality, deal with the reality, and therefore you can overcome it. You can accomplish your goals and dreams, whatever it is that you set out to do about why you want to become a millionaire. So that being said, guys, love to know your thoughts, your comments, your feedbacks, drop them in the comments section below. So with that being said, guys, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you follow us and like our page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.